All right, and we are back here on the GSMC Football Podcast. And for the second part of the show, we are going to talk about a couple of Lions getting paid, and that is their wide receiver, Amon Ross St. Brown, as well as their tackle, Penny Sewell. And and this is big for the Lions, so first we'll get into Amon Ross St. Brown. So he agreed to a four-year extension with the Detroit Lions, keeping him through the 2028 season. This extension is worth over $120 million dollars with $77 million in total guarantees, with an annual salary of over $30 million. He becomes the highest paid wide receiver in terms of annual average salary. His $77 million in guarantees surpasses Cooper Cup's previous record of $75 million among wide receivers. And, yeah, I'm in Ross St. Brown. I, I, for me, I think he's one of the underrated receivers. You know, you talk about the top guys like Justin Jefferson and Jamar Chase and Tyreek Hill. Amon Ross St. Brown really is one of the best wide receivers in the NFL. Um, I mean, I still look at those guys as being better, but he is he is right up there with them. And you look at his first three seasons, uh, 2021, 90 catches for 912 yards, five touchdowns, 2022. I mean, his numbers only went up. Uh, 2022, 106 receptions, 1,161 receiving yards, and six touchdowns. And then in 2023, 119 receptions, 1,515 receiving yards, and 10 touchdowns. Had a great season and deserves to get paid. And, you know, him and Jared Goff, they're going to continue to, you know, build on their connection. And, you know, I, I'm high on the Lions going into next season. Well, I, I mean, I have been. Last year I was high on them. This year, I mean, I, you, for them, they want to take that next step and now get to the Super Bowl because they came really close last season. But unfortunately, they lost to the 49ers. But, I mean, this is a great, this, again, he has been so consistent for them. And, you know, he deserved this deal. And let's see if that kind of gets the ball rolling with, uh, you know, some other receivers that are looking to get paid. Because I know I didn't mention this, but there's also that possibility that Brandon Ayu could be traded during the draft. Now, again, I don't know if that's going to happen, but if it does, he's going to end up going somewhere else and getting paid elsewhere. So we'll see if that ends up happening. But, you know, you also got CeeDee Lamb looking for a new deal and Justin Jefferson looking for a new deal. So, um, you know, I'm in Ross St. Brown got paid now. So we'll see, uh, you know, if these other receivers eventually get their new deals. But he has now earned two Pro Bowl nods. 2023 first team all pro honors and had well i already went over his you know his receiving yards over each individual season but yeah so in total he's got uh 3588 receiving yards and 21 total touchdowns um again set career highs helping the lions win their first division title since 1993 and yeah he again one of the more consistent wide receivers and under under again underrated wide receivers in the NFL and he had a low drop rate of 1.2% in 2023 the lowest among wideouts with at least 125 targets which is which is really impressive so uh, the new deal averages to roughly 24.67 million dollars per year over the next 5 seasons and again i mean this is big for the lions being able to you know extend him keep him long term and they got to work on on Jared Goff's contract, which right now that's still a work in progress. But they at least signed him, and they also, like I said, they signed their left tackle Penny Sewell to a new contract, four years, one hundred twelve million dollars, making him the highest paid player at his position in NFL history. And this deal includes a staggering eighty five million dollars guaranteed, which is approximately seventy five percent of the total contract value. Sewell's Average annual salary of approximately $28 million surpasses that of any other tackle in the NFL. And again, they paid him right after Amon Ross St. Brown. He's 23 years old. He completed his third season in the NFL and, be, and has become one of the best positions. Oh, he's right tackle. I think I said left tackle. I meant to say right tackle. And he has earned uh, two Pro Bowl nods and was named first team All Pro for the first time in 2023. And, yeah, I mean, listen, him and St. Brown, they've been a part of that Lions turnaround along with Jared Goff, who they, you know, traded for, of course. 
But yeah, these were two guys that they drafted, you know, in the same the same year, and they have become key parts of their success. And I, right, wasn't it Penny Sewell where they had the uh, the reaction of when the Lions drafted him, and they were all going? I think I think it was, and they were all going crazy in the in the war room. Um, but yeah, I mean, he's really turned into a good player for them since they drafted him again, having a solid offensive lineman, you know, and having a solid offensive line in general, that, that really is a key part of being a successful team in the NFL. Um, you know, I mean, when you look at my, my team that I root for the giants and, you know, my friends who I'll be seeing tonight again with the jets, I mean, we've been trying to rebuild an offensive, our offensive lines for, you know, 10 years. 10 plus years really. It's just it has not been it's not been good. At least you know speaking for the Giants, it's just been that long and you're hoping that that eventually changes, but the Lions they were able to fix it. Uh they have one of the better offensive lines in the league and Penny Sewell is a huge part of that. So yeah, I mean, listen, paying both of these guys huge for them. Now they could focus on Jared Goff trying to get a deal done with him and then you go from there. And the Lions are another team. Let's see what they do in the draft. Like I said, they probably need another receiver. Because, again, they did lose. I know Josh Reynolds, he was a guy that, you know, was playing a big role. Well, not really a big role, but a decent role in the offense. And now he's no longer there. So, and you're again, Jamison Williams, for the Lions' sake, they are hoping for him to be the guy. To be that number two wide receiver opposite of Amon Ross St. Brown. And if that's the case, then, you know... I, again, I think you still address the receiver position, but, you know, that at least helps them out. And again, you see what Jamison Williams can do. He shows flashes, you know, but they're looking for that consistency. And if they can get that out of him, then they're in good shape. But, you know, the Lions, again, another team I'm curious what they do tonight. Um, You know, if they maybe take a receiver. I, I don't know if they're going to necessarily do that with their their first pick, but... I think that's a position that they will probably address at some point, uh, whether it's tonight, tomorrow, Saturday. We will, uh, we will see. But yeah, I mean, this, again, this is big for the Lions, and you know, for them going into next year, it's it's a big year for them. And again, they're trying to take it a step further in 2024 and get to a Super Bowl because they came very close to doing that. And unfortunately, they weren't able to hold on to the lead against the 49ers, like I said before, and they ended up losing that game. But, you know, they played well in the first half. They stopped running the ball. They weren't running the ball as effectively as they were in the first half. And then, you know, Dan Campbell took some huge gambles going forward on fourth down, and that ended up costing them. So... Next year, I mean, I expect them, you know, to be the favorites in the division. I think right now, them and the Packers, it's it's between them two, the two best teams in the NFC. And, and I think the Packers are going to be better, and these two teams split. So I, I think those games are going to be fun to watch. And, you know, let's see uh, the other teams in the division as well, because the Vikings are taking a quarterback. You know, that, that you, you figure that's going to happen, and, and you know the Bears are going to take one. So... You know, we'll see how that pans out for those two teams. But, yeah, I mean, this NFC North, is, is it's going to be fun to watch. It's going to be a fun division to watch next season. And right now, again, I'd probably give the Lions a slight edge over the Packers, give them the respect because they did win it last year. But I think the Packers are going to be really good. If Jordan Love continues what he did towards the end of last year, I, I mean, I, I think they're going to be right there with the Lions the whole way and again it's going to be fun watching those two teams match up against each other also the lions are going to be with new uniforms uh they brought back the uh the black jerseys which i think is really cool um so you got new uniforms it's going to be a new year you got you know these two players coming off of contract extensions you're hoping uh, for jared goff that he gets his new contract and they could uh you know, then they're off and running, so we'll see. I But like I said, now their focus is on Jared Goff and trying to get a deal done with him. And I hope he gets his new deal because he deserves it, the way he's played for them the last couple of years. And, you know, because I, I, 
I talked about Jared Goff uh, recently. And, you know, again, happy that he's found the new home with the Lions after, you know, what happened with them trading him, well, acquiring him in the Stafford deal. And it didn't seem like he was going to be the answer. He was kind of going to just be, like, phased out, and that was going to be it. But that was not the case, you know. Um, but credit to the Lions and their front office. This new regime really has just turned this franchise around and has taken it to new heights. And, you know, if you're a Lions fan, you got to be really excited with this team. And they've drafted really well. And, you know, there's things they, that they need to – improve on the defense of course i think still you know needs some work but they're heading in the right they, they are they are one of the better teams in the nfl they're one of the best teams in the nfc i look at them as being the second best team in the nfc right now so you know and, and now you got a chance with the draft to address some needs and i think they're going to do that i think they'll do well with this draft and then uh you know we'll see what happens when um you know we get to the start of the season so but yeah, I mean, it's huge getting both of these guys signed long term. And now let's see them try to get a deal done with their quarterback. So before we go into our next break, just want to remind you guys once again to tip or donate and get your comments recognized. Make sure to go to the following link. That is gsmcpodcast.net. Again, that really helps the show. Makes the show more interactive between myself, the host, and you guys, the viewers. Again, that is gsmcpodcast.net. And as always, it is displayed on the ticker at the bottom of the show segment down below so when we come back from our second break of the show we're going to talk about a team that i've been talking about another team that i've talked about a lot recently and that is the dallas cowboys so they signed micah parsons well not signed but they picked up micah parsons 50 year option as well as ezekiel elliott coming in for another visit and we'll talk about it once again uh, a potential return is that is that in the works we'll get into that as well when we come back from our second break of the show so with that being said stick around and we'll be right back here on the gsmc football podcast <laughs> 